Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is an honor to speak in support of this government's first annual federal budget. Just recently, I was knocking doors in my riding of Brampton East and just to be accessible to the people that sent me to Ottawa. And many of my constituents expressed support for this government's investments to help middle class Canadians succeed. Investments that do not just help them today, but to lay the groundwork for the success of future generations of hardworking Canadians. These hardworking Canadians include our young Canadians, who are some of the best and brightest and deserve great educational opportunities and work experiences for the future. Here at home and across the world, dramatic shifts are taking place that represent both challenges to and opportunities for Canada's economy. Managing Canada's ongoing demographic shift means that we must do more to invest in young Canadians, specifically in post-secondary education, training, and innovation. Mr. Speaker, when I meet young people at community events, at the doors, at their school events, I see in them limitless potential to be the leaders of today and tomorrow whether it be in the fields of science, law, business, the trades, or anything else they put their minds to. I've had the opportunity to attend some of the best post-secondary institutions in this country, as well as have a wonderful job experiences that helped me begin my career and prepare me for this honor of being a member of parliament. Thus, I am a strong believer in the power of education and training our young people to be the leaders of today and tomorrow. We must invest in this generation to ensure that we have support for our ongoing, our aging population and create economic growth to last generations. Unfortunately, for far too many Canadians, the rising cost of post-secondary education is making it less affordable. Fewer people are able to save for their education and those who receive financial assistance often find it difficult to repay their loans. This is why Budget 2016 proposes a package of reforms to the Canada Student Loans Program that will make post-secondary education more affordable for students from low and middle income families and ensure that student debt loans are more manageable. This includes a new flat rate student contribution to determine the eligibility for Canada Student Loans and Grants. This will ensure students are able to gain valuable work experience while not worrying about a reduction in their funding. This will also benefit adult learners who are working or have financial assets. Budget 2016 is increasing Canada student grants by 50% from 2,000 to 3,000 per year for students from low income families and 800 to 1,200 for students from middle income families. Additionally, Part-time students will receive $1,200 to $1,800 more per year as they aim to complete their education. This means that approximately 247,000 students from low-income families will benefit and 16,000 part-time students who work alongside school or care for their families will also benefit from the government's investments. This is a direct investment to meet the rising costs a post-secondary education. And I cannot understate the impact that this will have for many ordinary young people who are looking to build brighter futures regardless of their family or personal income. Also proposed is an increase in the loan repayment threshold to ensure that no student across the country will have to repay their Canada student loans until they're earning at least $25,000 per year. This measure will provide assistance of $131 million over five years starting in 2016 and 2017. Finding a good job is hard, Mr. Speaker. For young people, we need to do better to ensure our recent graduates are not burdened by student debt until they are on their feet and earning a decent income. Budget 2016 will also ensure our young people have real life skills they need that can often only be gained from experiences in the workforce. So our government is investing in employment opportunities for youth 
through an investment of an additional $165 million in 2016-2017 for the Youth Employment Strategy. As well, we're creating an expert panel on youth employment to guide future investments in labor market programming. We're ensuring that co-op placements and work integrated learning opportunities for young Canadians through an investment of $73 million over four years, starting in 2016-2017 for the post-secondary in industry partnership and cooperative placement initiative. We need to help young Canadians to gain valuable work and life experiences through an investment of $105 million over five years to support youth service. Additionally, there are numerous other provisions in our budget that will benefit young people. For example, by investing $3.4 billion over three years to upgrade and improve public transit systems across Canada, we are making it easier for young Canadians to get to and from work and school, which is also more environmentally friendly. By way of another example, Mr. Speaker, the millions we are investing in small businesses and innovation such as through the Industrial Research Assistance Program, will create new jobs in the future for our young Canadians to transition into. In all, Budget 2016 is a st strong follow-through in the commitments that we made in last year's campaign. We need to ensure that we invest and create the opportunities for young Canadians to succeed. The future of Canada depends on the quality and work ethic of our young Canadians. By investing in them, we are investing in a stronger and more prosperous Canada for years to come. I ran to become a member of Parliament to ensure future generations have the same opportunity as me. As a son of a taxi cab driver and a factory worker, I got to attend some of the best schools across this nation. I got to graduate from Osgoode Hall Law School, join as an Ontario lawyer, be called to the Ontario Bar, and become a member of Parliament. When I go to schools across my riding, I see the potential in young Canadians. I see that in this country, in Canada, if you work hard, you can achieve anything. And that education is the single most powerful tool to change your circumstance or achieve your dreams. So it's very important that in Budget 2016 that we are investing in young Canadians, we're investing in post-secondary education, so all Canadians across this country, if you have the work ethic, if you have the grades, financial assistance will be there for you to achieve your educational dreams. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Calgary, Shepherd. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the Member from Brampton East for his... Uh, for his speech, I mean, we, we've taken a flight together a few times already when I fly through Toronto, so I, I've spoken to him a few times. He mentioned, and it's been a theme today, uh, on the student loan provisions in the budget, the student grant provisions in the budget. I'm wondering if uh, the member can comment. There is a, a Federal Reserve Bank of New York report that was written not too long ago, July 2015, with a revised edition, March 2016, it's a staff report number 733. And in it, it studied the relationship between the federal U.S. student loan program and how it actually contributed to increasing tuition costs in the United States. And the relationship they found that the, su the subsidized loan effect is most pronounced for more expensive degrees for those offered by private institutions and for two-year degrees and for vocational programs. So if we're trying to help students by paying for their education, uh, wouldn't it seem that the, the latest data coming out of the United States where they provide significant contributions through loans and grant programs, I have a U.S. master's degree, so I'm a bit familiar with how expensive it is to get um, a post-secondary education there, um, that these types of programs, when you increase them, actually the correlation is you increase the cost of the programs that post-secondary institutions, in this case, this Federal um, Reserve Bank of New York found that the relationship was mostly between expensive programs, vocational programs, two-year programs. So isn't the effect of this increase in the budget going to be that program costs in Canada might actually start going up in relation to how much they're being subsidized? I'd like to hear the comments from uh, the member on this. Member for Brampton East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank my honourable colleague for the question. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that the U.S. and Canada are totally different when it comes to universities and post-secondary education. Here in Canada, the average tuition rate is a lot cheaper than it is in the U.S. And the study is, in my humble opinion, not relevant to what the government is doing in 2016. The government ran on a commitment to invest in Canadians, specifically to make sure that our young Canadians have every opportunity to succeed. And I know that in this country, 
that if you get an opportunity to go to some of the phenomenal post-secondary education institutions that we have across the country, that you can achieve your dreams. You can become a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer. But to ensure that that path happens for our young Canadians, we got to ensure that the infrastructure is there. We got to make sure that they're not ridden by debt. No student in this country should be making the decision on whether they should go to school or the workforce force based on the cost of tuition. The government should be investing in young Canadians, and that's what we're doing in Budget 2016. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Regina Luban. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, I thank the member for Brampanista for his remarks. It's been a pleasure working with him on the Government uh, Operations Committee. He spoke very eloquently about the need to invest in post-secondary education. The main way in which the federal government invests in post-secondary education is through the Canada Social Transfer. And I'm struck by the fact that this budget provides no increase at all in the Canada Social Transfer relative to the last Conservative budget. So we've had uh, you know, a number of good speeches today about post-secondary education, but when it comes to actually funding post-secondary institutions, uh, unfortunately the current government isn't doing anything more than the previous government did. So I wonder if the member for Brampton East uh, could tell us uh, when his government will be coming forward with an increase in the Canada Social Transfer. Member for Brampton East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to echo my honourable colleague's sentiments. It's an absolute honour and privilege to serve with him on the Government Operations Committee. Um, I want to focus on the increases that we're making to universities. We're dir directly investing through a post-secondary investment and research fund uh, to ensure that all universities across the country and the Minister of Innovation, Science and Economic Development is doing a phenomenal job traveling the country coast to coast to coast, speaking with the heads of universities to ensure that they have access to this funding and there's clear guidelines across the country to ensure that our post-secondary education institutions have the money to invest to ensure that when young Canadians go to these institutions that they're receiving that high quality education that in Canada we're so used to and that a lot of our member, honourable colleagues here have had the opportunity and the benefit of getting really good degrees, really good educations from very good institutions. So it is our job, it is actually our requirement to ensure that future generations have the same opportunity that we did. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for 